Welcome to Cyrene. Cyrenaica stretches across the coast of northwest Africa. It was known as Pentapolis in antiquity, a reference to the five main cities that formed the Greek colonies. Built on a lush plateau of the Green Mountains, in what is present-day Libya, a colony of Greek settlers formed the city of Cyrene in 630 BCE. Cyrene's population quickly grew, spreading out across the terraces of the plateau, making it the first and largest of the five colonies. The city of Cyrene was founded by Batos Aristotle, guided by the Oracle of Delphi. Overcrowded and suffering from drought, Batos's home island of Thera could not sustain its citizens. Batos consulted the Oracle, who told them to journey to the North African coast in search of arable land. A series of kings reigned over the city in the first two centuries. However, rebellion eventually ended the monarchy, and henceforth, the city was governed by the aristocracy. The key features of Cyrene were temples dedicated to gods, Apollo, Demeter, and Zeus, alongside Ptolemaic gods, such as Iset and Serapis. A large agora defined the city's center, and on the western edge, the famed Acropolis was built. A fortification wall was added around the harbor at the end of the second century CE. As the city grew, more buildings were constructed beyond the walls. Under Roman influence, Cyrene became an economic powerhouse, rising in status throughout the Mediterranean. Cyrene's school of medicine rivaled all others except for that of the Greek city, Kos. Some of the great minds in ancient math, astronomy, and geography were born or established in the various schools of the city, which included an institute of philosophy founded by Aristippus, a pupil of Socrates. From 115 to 117 CE, there was a revolt in the Jewish quarter that greatly damaged the city of Cyrene. Over time, a succession of battles, poor management of its silphium crop, and earthquakes eventually took their toll on the city. It was completely abandoned in 365 CE. The nearby port of Apollonia was an ideal location with its natural cove, sheltered by two islands and rocky inlets. Along with a lighthouse, the port was later equipped with quays and warehouses to accommodate the increased shipping traffic. With its success as a commercial trading port, Apollonia surpassed Cyrene to eventually become the capital of the Pentapolis. A number of earthquakes gradually shifted the city, causing many of its original structures to sink. 
some of its ruins can still be seen underwater. Welcome to the Gladiator Arena. While gladiators would not perform in Cyrene until later in the Roman era, the team decided to include a gladiatorial arena for two reasons. First, they believed it was important to portray this aspect of Roman life. And second, they felt it would add interesting gameplay possibilities. The first gladiators to enter the arena were prisoners of war. It was a spectacle of violent clashes between men and against wild beasts that lasted nearly a thousand years. Eventually, volunteers began to enter the ring. For status and money, many of the more skilled combatants increased the quality of the entertainment. Thus, the profession of gladiator came to be. Bound by contract to the master of the gladiators, the fighters were fed, trained, and guarded in barracks. Gladiators were separated into heavy and light armored fighters, each with their own set of specific armor and weapons. Organizers often had two audience favored factions face each other in combat. The events were highly organized. Fights were held with a background of music and supervised by a referee. Death, either in the course of combat or by decision, was not always the only way out for the loser. Several were released due to their performance and gained great notoriety as celebrities. Welcome to the Agora and Thermal Baths. Cyrene's Agora was the public marketplace and political hub of the city. Its central courtyard was open to the sky, while market stalls and shops ran along the sides, 
some neatly tucked away under long roofed colonnades. As in other Greek cities, the Agora included a central hearth, known as a Pritoneum. This place served as Cyrene's official embassy, where guests were welcomed to the city. An unnamed statue representing naval victories was the centerpiece of the Agora. The statue's female figure likely represents Nike, the goddess of victory. It was likely very similar to the victory of Samothrace, which currently resides in the Louvre Museum and served as a reference for the team. The Cyrene Agora also displayed many temples and monuments celebrating its founding king, Batos, and the city gods. There were two altars associated with the Temple of Apollo and a marble statue base dedicated to the goddess Libya. The civic buildings included a law court complete with an archive library that would have housed legal documents and other papers essential to the city's governance. Traces of fire damage to the building's remains indicate that it was possibly destroyed during the rebellion of the Jewish community in 115 CE. Public baths were common in Roman and Greek cities, and Cyrene held true to this tradition. Two thermal baths from different eras were discovered among the ruins. An inscription at the entrance of one of the baths is presumed to be attributed to the owner. It dates the building to the Hellenistic period. Mosaics were originally created for practical reasons, the need to waterproof floors. Imported by Greeks in Egypt and Cyrenaica, the designs represented either scenes from daily life, marine fauna, or mythological figures. In addition to traditional Greek motifs, they also integrated concepts specific to Egyptian culture, such as the Nalumbo. The best examples of mosaics recovered to date, however, come from Alexandria. The Cyrene baths were fitted into an underground tomb dated somewhere between the 8th and 6th century BCE. Bath seats were carved directly in the rock, allowing for more comfortable ablutions. As with many of the public buildings, the thermal baths were elaborately decorated. Statues such as Aphrodite and Eros the Archer were discovered within. The Frigidarium, a pool of cold water, was the first room visitors entered. It was followed by the Tepidarium, or tepid water area, and then the hot water room called the Caldarium. Water for the thermal baths was sourced from a natural spring. Burning stones were deposited into the water to create steam as required. The flowing water of the spring ended in a cistern and fountain referred to as the Aqua Augusta. Later Roman baths were built under Emperor Trajan and then restored under Hadrian. After the earthquake of 365 CE, they were replaced by baths of Byzantine design, with stones from the old thermal baths used in the reconstruction. The team relied on documentation describing the baths built under Trajan in order to create the location available in the game.
Welcome to the Temple of Zeus in Cyrene. Facing east towards the rising sun stands the temple dedicated to the cult of Zeus. It was built sometime in the 5th century BCE. 70 meters long with 46 Doric style columns, the imposing structure was the largest Greek temple erected in Africa. It was only slightly larger than the Parthenon and the Temple of Zeus in Olympia. The exterior was designed with the decorative elements common to Doric architecture. The dimensions of the columns were different, giving visitors an impression of uniqueness when viewing each facade. After the temple was destroyed during the Jewish rebellion, Emperor Hadrian had it reconstructed. He chose not to rebuild the outer portico, but did restore the new Corinthian columns in marble. The temple was later completed under Marcus Aurelius. In the time of Augustus, a faithful but smaller imitation of the Olympian Zeus was used to be worshipped. Hadrian then installed a new 12-meter-high statue matching the Zeus in Olympia. It was made of chiseled marble with the head, arms, and feet carved in the round. Archaeologists confirm that there was a monumental statue of Zeus in this temple, though experts remain divided on whether it was one of Zeus or one more specific to the cult of Zeus Ammon. The team elected to place a statue of Zeus Ammon in this location, knowing that Cyrene was central to the spread of this cult in the Greek Mediterranean area. Welcome to Important Monuments of Cyrene. The Sanctuary of Apollo sits on a prominent edge of the plateau of Cyrene, overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. It could be accessed either by the road from Apollonia, via the necropolis, or by the Sacred Way, coming from the agora of the city. The abundance of temples and statues throughout the city reflect the various Greco-Roman and Egyptian cult influences over the centuries. Temples dedicated to Apollo, Cyrene, and Zeus stood alongside those of Ptolemaic gods, such as Serapis and Iset. Numerous fountains were decorated to represent other gods, including the city's namesake, Cyrene. A vestibule known as a propyleum marked its entrance and highlighted the fountain of Apollo. God of the sun and of protection, Apollo was an important deity to both Greeks and Romans. The sanctuary built in his honor was considered to be sacred. The imposing temple was built on a natural cornice, stretching more than 200 meters in length and roughly 50 meters in width, and was surrounded by a vast Doric colonnade. Sections uncovered by archaeologists indicate restorations to the columns were made between 115 and 116 CE. The altar was located in front of the temple. Both are estimated to be the same age, 
though restored at different times. Many bulls were sacrificed each year at the altar in honor of Apollo. The imprint in the stone of the ring used to strap the animals down is visible to this day. Carved during the Roman era, the Apollo Cytherid was discovered near the temple. It is considered an important archaeological find. The statue of Apollo was in pieces when it was uncovered. Remarkably, most fragments were found, and the restored statue is currently at the British Museum. The team extrapolated the statue's final look based on the current partial reconstruction and placed it inside the temple to reflect the patron deity of the area. The amphitheater of Cyrene is located on what is known as the Terrace of Myrtosa, next to the Sanctuary of Apollo. It was built on top of the old theater in the second century. Originally used as a stage, the theater became an amphitheater once the taste for Roman gladiatorial entertainment reached the city. Entrances were placed at both ends of the amphitheater. A wall replaced the first two rows of bleachers as protection from the array of wild animals in the ring. The tunnel used for the parade of beasts and gladiators circled the arena, unlike the Roman Colosseum's tunnel, which was beneath the amphitheater. The basement and corridors accommodated both the gladiators and the animals and included lifts that raised the traps into the arena center. Since the original theater was close to the cliffside, the expansion didn't allow for a perfect circle. Instead, junctions of the semicircle formed the arena into an oval shape. This elliptical formation still ensured an excellent view from all angles. The team decided to create a perfectly round theater for technical reasons and use the structure of the Roman theater as their reference. Welcome to the Acropolis of Cyrene. Located on the western edge of the city, Cyrene's Acropolis was smaller than the one in Athens, though its high vantage point provided protection for the city. At its entrance was a single door, flanked by two towers. An inscription, legible to this day, states that the walls and the citadel were restored in the time of Augustus. A number of statuettes have been excavated from the site, including one of Berenice, the daughter of Magus, the king of Cyrene, and half-brother of Ptolemy II. At the northeast tower, there is a sanctuary consisting of two small temples with a vestibule and an altar believed to be that of Serapis and Iset. When the temples were excavated, archaeologists found traces of fire damage. However, there are no indications as to when this fire occurred. In 
In the 20th century, a fortification was built above the ward to defend against an invading army. It covered the ancient remains of nearby Roman houses entirely, and archaeologists have yet to fully excavate them. Welcome to Major Exports of Cyrene. Cyrene's main source of economic wealth was in the cultivation and export of poppies and silphium. Though the opium oil from the poppies was also an export, little is known about this crop. Information about the cultivation of silphium, however, is more accessible to us. Silphium, with its yellow flower, was considered a gift from the sun god. Grown solely in this region near the Mediterranean Sea, silphium extract was exported at high prices and was so crucial to the wealth of Cyrenaica that it was depicted on their coins. <laughs> Silphium's roots produced a resin used by both the Greeks and Romans in medicines intended to cure cough, fever, indigestion, and many other ailments. It was also used as a contraceptive. In a compilation of culinary recipes from the 4th century BCE, the herb is mentioned in various recipes, including a flamingo dish. <coughs> High demand, overexploitation, and possibly a shift in climate all contributed to the eventual extinction of silphium. The last mention of it dates from the 4th century CE, and to this day, no traces of this plant have been identified. <laughs> <laughs> 